United States Senator Dr. Bill Cassidy is here. Hey, Dr. Bill, welcome back to Keel. It's been a while. How you been? Hey, Robert, I'm doing really well. Hey, there's a rumor out there that you're a Cowboys fan, not a Louisiana New Orleans Saints. No, what, what I said was, what I said was, based on the tradition of the Cowboys having, bluntly speaking, far more winning seasons going back to the Tom Landry days, I think Shreveport and Bozier, when they're both playing well, is more of a Cowboys town. You being so, Robert, from. Let me ask you this, man. How many, I bet you a higher percent of your listeners were not born when Tom Landry was the coach of the Cowboys. Now, wait a second. That's you know true. What I'm saying? You're right. Uh, so, so, like, are we going to say, okay, wait a second. Uh, Vince Lombardi was, you know, Jimmy Taylor played for the Packers, and so, therefore, uh, he was an LSU grad. We're going we're to support the Packers? I love you know, this guy. <laughs> Dr. Bill, I cannot off the top of my head think of an instance in my radio career where someone who was the same age as me tried to make me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my, my birthday is this week, so I'm feeling it, brother. I'm feeling it. <laughs> so the Saints are going to win for your birthday, right? Uh, I hope so. You know, Bridgewater looked pretty good. And so uh, it's kind of fun to see winning teams in the state. So that's uh, always a nice thing to talk about. Dr. Bill, let's get down to issues. There's been a lot of climate, climate disaster talk this week. And bluntly speaking, I think that's all it is, is talk. But... On the political side, the Dems, especially the ones who are running for the presidency, they get more and more radical, specifically about we have to do something about fossil fuels, uh, more directly, America's energy independence, and that has sort of trickled down to the United States Congress. What's going on? What are the Democrats trying to ban or at least limit now? So they're trying to destroy our economy. I've made the point that the reason that the United States has cut our greenhouse gas emissions is because of cheap natural gas. Cheap natural gas that has taken a greater and greater portion of our energy feedstock and by so doing has lowered carbon emissions. So since 2005, since 2005, the United States has left greenhouse gas emissions even though our economy is far bigger and we have many more people. That means when you punch a hole in the ground in DeSoto Parish and you begin to develop natural gas, you're creating jobs in DeSoto, expanding the tax base, you're creating a product can then be shipped to the rest of the country or the rest of the world, and you're decreasing greenhouse gas emissions. So when the left says, let's ban fracking, what they're really saying is let's drive up your energy costs and let's turn ourselves into a prehistoric economy because we need energy to run it. And by the way, let us, get, uh, let us actually increase our global greenhouse gas emissions because we're doing away with the very thing which has led to the decrease in global greenhouse gas emissions. And, Dr. Bill, this isn't just a bunch of Democratic presidential candidates that are yapping far left to try to get, uh, to try to get the base of their party on their side. This is Democrat legislators elected that have introduced this in the U.S. Congress, right? Yes, and, and the crazy thing about it, is that when you say to somebody, wait a second, do you realize that the lucite desk that you're sitting at was made with the plastic within it was made with natural gas? Oh, they look kind of confused. And you say, the computer you're sitting at, all the plastic, the, the car you're driving in, the whole dashboard, that was made with plastic? Do you understand that? And the reason that an electric car gets such good gas mileage is that because, it's because they've decreased the weight of the car, and a lot of that is by using plastic made with fossil fuel. So there's just a note of ignorance in some of these things, Robert, um, a little bit like somebody saying that Louisiana should be a Cowboys uh, state as opposed <laughs> to a Saint state. Energy production, keeping it in the U.S. and in Louisiana, it sounds like a no-brainer. Why are we fighting this? We're fighting it because people do not understand that which I just said, that the United States has lowered its greenhouse gas emissions in absolute amounts since 2005 because of the production of cheap, clean-burning natural gas. And, in fact, if you're going to have renewables, you know, solar panels, windmills, you can only have them if you have fast-acting natural gas-generated electricity behind it in case the sun stops shining, the wind stops blowing. All that is related to 
cheap, plentiful natural gas, which creates jobs in the Haynesville Shale and which expands the tax base for our country. They just don't get it. I know you wanted to talk about um, what I consider a kind of a money shell game, which is it's it's called trade based money laundering. You're working on legislation with regard to that. The, the average Joe listening to you has no clue what that is. I'm not real close either. What is it? What's going on? The average Joe knows somebody who's addicted to drugs or who has died from a drug overdose. 66,000 Americans die annually from drug overdose, more than died in 10 years in Vietnam. That's what we do know. Now, the, way, the reason for trade-based money laundering, you sell a lot of drugs in the United States illegally. They're coming from China, Mexico, and elsewhere. But you got to get the money out of the country to finance the next shipment of drugs. You got to get it out, and carrying two cases of cash is too easily detected. Trade-based money laundering is where they use legitimate trade. You know, I'm telling you some, you know, widget to ship their money offshore. Mm-hmm. Now, when you do that, you can do it in such a way that you end up shipping a lot of money offshore, um, and then you buy more drugs, which you ship back into the country, perpetuating the cycle of Americans dying from drug overdose. So, what are your we're chances? Trying to inter- we're ahead. trying to interrupt the financing. So you're, you've introduced legislation. You're working on legislation that would uh, ban this. What's uh, what's the plan there, Doctor Bill? Well, banning is very difficult to do. But right now, our federal government has like seven or eight different agencies that are somehow responsible for it. Now you can't get you know three children to collaborate and to get into a car to for vacation to Granny's, right? Uh, so how do you get seven agencies to cooperate, cooperate? So what we're trying to do is get those agencies to cooperate to become a more effective weapon in stopping this, this money laundering. Um, and so we've initial we've initiated this um, just by doing an assessment. How are we doing? By the way, it's terrible. And what can we do to get better? And this is something we've been working on for two years. We'll continue to work on. We've got to stop this drug trade. Governor's race. Who are you voting for? Uh, I'm, not, I'm going to vote for the Republican. Um, <laughs> I'm, and I think we've got two good Republican candidates. And I made I made the public decision that I was not going to endorse either of our Republicans, but I think they're both good men. And I do think that when we look at Houston, and so many of our companies are relocating to Houston, uh, and uh, so many of our people are moving to Texas or to Georgia. Um, our young people are graduating, taking their degrees elsewhere. Uh, we've got to do something about that. Need to and get John Bell out of there. So again, I'm going to I'm going to support the Republican, and uh, I like those those principles. Senator Bill Cassidy, thanks for your time, sir. Hey, thank you. Mm-hmm. Who did? One hundred one. Happy birthday, by the way. One hundred one seven FM, seven ten. Keel traffic time from Ruben.